from 10 to 18 years old, God did not exist to me because of my All right, everybody, today I'm gonna get baptized. I'm gonna share my thoughts leading into today, kind of like why I decided to get baptized. Mind you, I've been baptized before as a kid, and a lot of people, well, really my wife, is asking why I'm doing this. And I just wanna share with you my thoughts, kind of like this process, my thoughts before and after, so that way, you know, if you're kind of on this spiritual journey yourself and you don't really know what's normal, what's not normal, I guess I'll share with you what's what's normal for me, uh, what's happening for me. A long time ago, I was baptized. I don't really remember it. I'm pretty sure I was a baby. And uh, my family, well, my mom specifically, I don't know how she was brought up on religion, spirituality, whatever the case might be, but at least for my entire childhood, a connection with God always felt like a chore, right? Like you have to be good. Otherwise, God will do something bad because you're not being a good person. It was pray, pray to God, pray to God for, for good things and good blessings, right? Like asking God for things. If life was bad or things weren't going good, just pray to God and that's it. Just pray to God. But the reason why that didn't work for me was because I didn't understand how to pray. I didn't understand the point of prayer. I didn't really understand why I kept asking for this being this person for things all the time and like what am I supposed to expect so as a kid without really any proper guidance or teaching you are kind of just like what am I doing is this a task is this like homework like that's how it felt it felt like a very surface level thing action to take and over time I went to Catholic school I did the things and blah 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 I didn't feel really a connection to, to God because I mean it was just kind of being shoved down my throat to do the thing to pray and nobody was explaining to me what this all meant so in my head as a kid coming up i started putting up this wall because i'm like well i don't like this this doesn't feel good it doesn't make any sense to me nobody's explaining it to me and then at 10 years old when my family starts splitting apart then i was really like resentful you know i'm like well if there was a god why would he allow all of this to happen why would we be going through all this pain all of this suffering and then i started to become resentful towards the same god that my mom used to tell me that I had to pray to. My relationship spiritually was basically broken. There was a massive block to what was supposed to be and what was my experience. I think that this is kind of like where for probably until I was 18 years old, there was from 10 to 18 years old, God did not exist to me because emotionally and spiritually I was vacant. There was nothing there. I was going through a lot of stuff. You know, if you're, if you're a child of divorce, you understand what I'm saying. You're kind of like drowning things out. It's when I started drinking, smoking weed, doing drugs at an early age, I didn't really have any spiritual guidance. And I don't think my dad was like super religious or spiritual. Maybe he was, but he didn't really share it. You know, my mom was kind of like that religious type that just told you to pray, but didn't really teach you, nurture you, help you understand what and why and how kind of to do it. Um, and I would think that if you want somebody to accept God more, it's to kind of teach them, mentor them in, in that space. And so I just completely just rejected this whole idea of God. And the first time that I think that I like reestablished any form of connection was in boot camp. If you guys were ever in the military, maybe it might make sense. You're stripped of your identity. You don't really know who you are anymore because who you thought you were doesn't exist in the military. And so a lot of me and my brothers, what we found was because they let you go to service every Sunday, that was kind of our escape from the madness. Um, but at the same time, we actually found some type of spiritual connection to this higher being. And I think that's what like sparked it again for me. So the biggest thing for us was like learning this, this place that spiritually we could connect, spiritually we could find peace even in the chaos of like becoming this this infantry marine and i found solace in in that space i still didn't understand it i don't know if i was completely emotionally and spiritually like open there but something started shifting and i started getting some tattoos and all of these things and mind you in in my head i was still kind of blocked from really believing that i really truly believed in god again but for some reason all of my tattoos and i'll kind of show you a little bit later all of my tattoos had some type of spiritual connection to them. Like literally, there's a cherub on my arm, which is a child angel. 
that's in front of a cathedral. So even though I represented a broken child, for some reason, unconsciously, I put this cherub that represented me as a boy in front of a cathedral. So why would I do that if consciously I didn't understand why I was doing it? And then unconsciously, what was calling for me to do it? These little patterns that started to show up throughout my life that I didn't recognize at the time while it was kind of happening, Looking back on it now, it makes sense. Especially in this past, I would say year, two years, but more specifically this past year, I've been going through quite a lot of hardship. And the thing that brought me down to my knees was literally almost losing everything. But leading up to that point, I started going to church a little bit. And when I started going to therapy, church was like a place for me to really understand myself and my purpose um, as a man and as a human. And somehow that led me back to church. And so I started like rediscovering my relationship with God and it's led me to here. It's led me to the point where like, I want to establish a connection in a public setting to basically say, I accept God back into my life fully. Like there's no more walls. And the reason why I'm doing that is because for me, spiritually where I'm at, it's the next logical, emotional and spiritual step. But one of the things that I do want to expand on is kind of like the whole uh, process of baptism because my wife, she, she was afraid that I was going to be scared to, uh, or I was going to be upset today that she didn't want to come with me. And the reason why like you guys shouldn't be worried about whether somebody, you know, joins you in this journey or not is because it's, it's your journey and your relationship with God. Like it's not supposed to be this event for the family to witness, to make it special. It's already special because you're taking the step to, to do it or to even want it or to open yourself to it. And so my wife was actually scared. She's like, would you be would you would you be mad if I didn't go with you and I said no of course not you know like this is this is my experience this is my journey and you know whether you agree with this or not my wife had kind of the same upbringing as me when it came to religion or spirituality it's the same thing shoving down your throat type of deal and so the worst thing I can do is to do the same thing that led both of us to kind of put up this wall and instead what I decided to do in my household is I will let my family, I'll let my wife, I'll let my daughters do what they do in their journey and accept them for whatever journey they decide to go on that calls to them. At the end of the day, this is like my relationship with God. It has nothing to do with anybody else. Whether they, they want to join or not, the, that it's completely irrelevant. And you know, a lot of people might think that that's like a bad thing, but again, like it's taking away from what I believe this experience is supposed to be, which is my experience for my relationship. And so right now, I think we're just gonna pull up. We're gonna start the experience, the journey, and see what happens. Hopefully, you know, we can um, record it and, and share it with you guys. And if we can't, then I'll kind of like share with you guys after the fact, you know, what's going on and how I'm feeling about the whole situation. You know, I just wanna show you guys like how I'm talking prior, how I'm talking after, and, and all of that good stuff. So with that being said, guys, we're pulling up. Here we go.
was crying. Thank you. God bless you, man. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. So it's interesting when we uh, when we walked out of the uh, the prep, mm -hmm. divine timing. He was right there. I know. He and then you now on the I finished, and he's mm -hmm. right there. He touched Just, you on the shoulder earlier. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. It's always interesting how that stuff works. <laughs> We just got finished at church, got baptized, went to um, the sermon today. Definitely good to be back in a physical uh, church. I haven't been able to go to one since we moved from Cali to Texas, but this is definitely the church you know I want to go to and um, I want to bring my family to. Now, the whole experience uh, for the baptism was interesting. Like I said, I went in just whatever happens, happens. It was funny because I told the pastor that was dropping me into the water to like let me stay in there for a long time until I'm ready to come up. And I think he forgot for a second when he started lifting me up already. Or he freaked out, maybe he felt a tug or something, but he pulled me out and it was like, it was like two seconds basically. But I don't think that it took away from my experience. I think that maybe that meant that I didn't need to be in the water to like fully experience it, that simply the act of doing it was enough. So sometimes things are spoken without it having to be said. You know, things are done without it having to ever be done. So if you guys ever have experienced in your life or like, you don't know how, but like shit just somehow worked itself out. And you're just like, I don't even know how this happened. Sometimes you can be in like the, the, the darkest of times and you're like, I have no clue how I'm ever gonna get out of this. And like right at the very, very end when everything is about to go to shit, everything is about to crumble, something happens. I don't know the word for it, synchronicity, I don't know. <laughs> but there, there's like divine timing, right? So the interesting part though, was before we got into the baptism area, I think that we, we left the conference room where they were kind of like instructing how it was gonna go down, whatever the case might be. And then Pastor Keith, I, I walked out and Pastor Keith was like coming towards me. And for some reason, he, t he tapped me on the shoulder. He said, glad, glad you're here, congratulations. And in my head, I was like, that's very interesting. The place is massive. Out of all the places he could have been in that one specific moment, that's where he was right as I was walking out. And out of all the people that were kind of in front of me and behind me, he tapped me on the shoulder, um, but not the person ahead of me. And I don't know if he tapped anybody behind me because I was going, uh, you know, following where I was supposed to go. And so that was very interesting to me because I was like, oh, that's interesting how that happened because Pastor Keith is the reason why I was at that church in the first place. And we've never met before outside of me watching him speak on stage. So I downloaded that and I was like, oh, interesting. And so we went about, you know, the whole experience that, you know, you'll probably see here um, in a little bit. But um, we got up, we went to the submersion plate or whatever it's called. And they were playing music and just, you know, I was just kind of like praying. I was in a meditative state type of deal. And I was just kind of like absorbing, feeling, experiencing whatever was coming about. And um, I noticed that so many people were getting emotional and I, I could feel like everybody's energy. You know, there's a lady in front of me that was like really breaking down and she was like, walking up towards the, uh, the, the, I'll call it a pool. And I, I thought that was really beautiful that, you know, she was, she was like, her hands were like shaking crazy. So I love seeing that because it was like, it was so meaningful to her that she was that emotional about it. And I love that. Like I really did because I remember when I think it was about a year, year and a half ago or so when I actually first saw or heard pastor Keith speak, it was the day before I heard him speak. I had a moment like that where like, I, I fully surrendered to God. I don't know what it was, but the, the, the day of that I heard him speak, I was in my bed in, at the hotel because I, I lived in Cali at the time. I went to Texas to, to watch this and my hands were up and I was just breaking down crying because of all the things that were happening. And I just didn't understand how I was ever gonna get through anything. And I just remember just laying in my bed, just hands up, like fully surrendering. Like, I, I don't know, I'm so scared. I have so much fear. I don't know how I'm gonna take care of my kids. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. I don't know how I'm gonna get like through all of this. And I was having like what I thought was an emotional breakdown, but really it was a spiritual revelation. And the interesting part about this, after I got baptized, we bumped into Pastor Keith again. After I finished, I was like all wet and everything like that. I was all going to, to get all my stuff so I can go change over. And then again, he was in the hallway. Out of all the times he could have been right there in that moment at the hallway, he was there again. And so what that did was it showed to me that 
maybe God was telling me that I'm on the right path, I'm doing the right thing. It's again, learning how to interpret these signs and learning how like the mind can go into trying to overread it, overthink it, to just fully trusting that it was purpose, it was meant to be, there was something there. And I just remember like the, the whole time, the experience for me as we got into the church was different because normally when I went to a, the church back in Cali, there was still something lingering in my head like a hug, some type of wall. But this time, I wasn't worried about people that were there, but I was listening for the message that God had for me. I wasn't worried about anybody. I wasn't worried about anybody's opinion. I wasn't overthinking the way that I used to overthink being in church, kind of being a little bit conscious of everybody. And I was there more for me and, and, and what I needed from God in that moment to connect, right? To, to establish that relationship. And I think that caused me to be a lot more present, which is a beautiful thing. And there's something that called to me, which is like, they're going to have like a warriors thing going on uh, sometime next month that I'm probably going to sign up for. There's something that called to me for that I'm to be a better, stronger man for my family. So I don't know if, if that's the next step. I don't know if that's what all it was that I needed to extract from that moment. But I do know there was also a piece when Pastor Keith was kind of like, you know, finishing up his sermon. He was kind of talking to me as, as a father. It was a great thing to kind of hear because, you know, my dad never talked to me in the way that he was talking to the entire church. And I think that me being open and absorbing it all was very different than maybe what I'm used to because of, again, that emotional, spiritual guard that I, that I had. So overall, obviously I'm gonna continue to unpack this throughout the day, but the biggest thing for me, I think, that baptism did was it shifted an identity, right? I think the reason why people are either hesitant to do something or to connect fully or surrender to God is because of an identity that they're holding on to, that they're, that they're a certain way and a, a way that they're not and that affects them, right? That affects their ability to be fully open. And for me, I feel, I don't know how to say it, more like my own man because I made this decision. It wasn't, you know, thrown onto me. It wasn't my parents telling me to do it. It wasn't anybody forcing me to do anything. It was, I felt called to have this deeper relationship with God and I chose in my own power to connect with him on this level. So that's just my thoughts directly after the baptism. We're just gonna spend some time with family today. Really just again, bond, connect, play some poker, <laughs> you know, drink some affogato if you guys know what that is. And you know, as, as the day goes by, we'll see if there's anything more to unpack. But overall, it, it's been a great spiritual experience. I don't think emotionally anything has changed because I've already surrendered in, in, in emotional capacity to God. So I'm not, I don't feel that like, like I'm, I'm, a cry, I'm about to cry or break down or anything because I think I've already established that emotionally. I think right now it's more of spirituality and consciousness. Spiritual consciousness. I think that's, that's what it is for me right now. With that being said, we're going to hang out with the family, kick it for a little bit, and then if we got stuff to unpack, we'll unpack it. Otherwise, you know, I'll close out this uh, video with whatever comes to me today. So. Hopefully you guys have liked the experience so far. I'm glad they let, let us film it the entire time. It's probably gonna be good for them anyway because it brings more eyeballs, more awareness to like how awesome they operate inside of their church and how it's different. I was just telling my sister um, how different that experience is versus other churches we've been to. So um, anyway, time to see the girls. Hey babe. <laughs> just kidding, we've already done this. <laughs> Are you going to, um... Certificate of Baptism. Phil Bohol was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit on the 25th day of August in the year of our Lord, 2024, at Elevate Life Church in Frisco, Texas. Are you going to frame it? Yes, I am. What size frame is that? Is Probably a regular piece of paper. Is <laughs> <laughs> It's okay, huh? I definitely feel more present. I don't know how to I, I don't know how to put it into words yet. Something shifted. Don't know what it is. I will keep you guys posted as usual. If you guys got some value from this video, like, subscribe, do the thing. If you guys like more videos like this, vlog style, different experiences that I have in my personal life and my mindset, my emotional, my spiritual journey, let me know in the comments too. Much love as always, guys. Peace.